Hey guys, and welcome back to the FFF HQ. I found that it's really important for me to spend time with Jesus every day. I like to do it first thing in the morning. I drink my coffee and my matcha. If I don't do it in the morning, I find that I just don't do it. But when I do it in the morning, I feel like I just get more centered through the day. I just am able to call up scripture in my mind if I go through like a stressful moment or something that kind of ticks me off or throws me off or something like that. When I start my day with Jesus, I feel like he kind of carries me throughout the day. So I kind of wanted to share five of my favorite devotional books that I've done in the past, maybe some key messages that I've learned, how they've kind of helped me, so that if you're looking for something to study too, maybe you'll get some ideas. So the first book that I want to talk about is called Me, Myself, and Lies by Jennifer Rothschild. The whole concept is kind of like a thought closet makeover, so it's comparing our thoughts to our closets. So what we think about ourselves is like what we wear, it's how we feel about ourselves or feel badly about ourselves. And I've struggled a lot with thought closet or bad thought closets because I'm kind of a very negative person towards myself. So this has been a really helpful book. One of my favorite lessons was on page 34 and it kind of made us go through the, I guess, negative labels that we think about ourselves. So like worthless, ugly, unvaluable. And then it gave a whole list of scripture that kind of counteracts those. So we can kind of go and memorize those verses. And I was able to kind of memorize a few of them that I can call on when I'm talking to myself in sort of negative labels and negative terms. And it's something that I still do to this day. And I read this book probably a year ago. So it's been really, really helpful. So number two is one that you can see has really spoken to me with all the sticky notes. It's called the Proverbs 31 woman. So I'm sure we all know the Proverbs 31 verse in the Bible. It's pretty much like the ideal woman. And I've found, at least for me and other women I've talked to, it kind of makes us feel like we're never gonna measure up because this woman is basically perfect. But the aim of Proverbs 31, this devotional, is kind of to show that she's not perfect. She actually has grace for herself. And that's something that I've been working on is grace for myself when I make mistakes or when I talk negatively to myself. Um, so I've really liked reading this book. And one of the main takeaways that I learned from this is the difference between excellence and perfection. I never really thought that there was a difference in excellence in perfection. It was kind of two of the same words that meant the same thing, just different ways of saying it. But it kind of talks about how perfection is there's no grace. We have to be perfect. If we make a mistake, we're failures. We feel terrible about ourselves. But with excellence, there's grace. So if we make a mistake, we know, okay, we didn't do it great. We didn't do it perfectly. But there's always next time and you can give yourself grace and self-compassion. So that's something that's really spoken to me, just the excellence versus perfection um, kind of comparison. So if you struggle a lot with perfectionism, like me, you will love the Proverbs 31 book. Number three is called the Redefine Study, which is about redefining our identities. So the world tells us that we need to be certain things. We need to be perfect. We need to be CEOs. We need to be always on the go. We need to be beautiful. All those things. And that's not really identity at all. Our identity is in who Christ says we are, which is already beautiful, already perfect, already called by him. Identity is something that I've struggled with a lot. I've always been like the fitness person or the healthy eater. Um, so this book has been huge in recovering from kind of disorder eating, which I'm going to do a video on later just to redefine my identity and my worth and my value. And one of my biggest takeaways from this book was on page 43, it talks about when Moses was called to lead the Israelites and he was all like, God, don't think I can. I'm kind of just this lowly Moses guy, this lonely um, Israelite. And God says, I am who I am. So God doesn't say, oh, you're kind of lowly and I'll just give you the strength. He answers with who he is. Because since we're all called, called by God, we are his. And so our identity is his and that is enough. I am who I am is all of us. And that just kind of reminded me that no matter what calls me to, God calls me to do, what I'm scared of, I have God's identity and that will always be exactly what I need. So number four is called Breaking Free by Beth Moore. And so what I'm currently doing right now just like what it sounds like, it's about breaking free. So anything, any kind of bondage that is holding you back from living the life that Christ called you to, this is gonna kind of help you break free from that. So for me, that was disordered eating and body image stuff. Um, one of my favorite things that it kind of taught me was about pride. So when, when we think about pride, we think that we think that means that someone who thinks they're better than everybody else. But what it can also mean is that maybe we think that we know better than God and that we can break free from our bondage ourselves, which is something I really struggled with. So here it talks about how God hates pride, but it also says that God's hatred of pride doesn't mean he wants you to feel bad about yourself. So that's something that really resonated with me. I also love this book, it comes with a DVD series that you can do in a group, or I do it by myself, and it's just kind of a nice switch up from reading every day. Um, this is a very long study, I think it's like three or four months. So if you want a good long Bible study, you might wanna look into Breaking Free. So number five is actually not a book. It's an app on your phone called Right Now Media. I will preface this because I do believe you have to get your church to sign up for it and then they can give access to all the, con the congregation. I think I could be wrong, but that's what I'm pretty sure. So you might wanna to talk to your church. But what it is, it's kind of like a Netflix for like Jesus followers. So it has videos and kind of books and stuff on many different topics like parenting, youth, 
marriage, men, woman. I like to use the woman option and I go through a lot of them and I don't know if you can really see from there, but there's just different options of books and then you can click on them and there's different video series and teachings. So there's like, you know, two video series, there's week long video series and it's nice just to have it right at your fingertips and have so many options for different people, whether it's women or men or kids or family or parenting, whatever you're into, you can find something on Right Now Media. And there you have it, five different devotionals that I have personally found really helpful, not only in understanding more about Jesus and developing a better relationship with him, but also really understanding myself and who he calls me to be in the life that he wants for me, redefining my identity, working on my thoughts, and kind of separating myself from the world and just kind of understanding who Taylor is to Jesus. I would love to hear if you have any other book recommendations or devotionals that I could read, or if you've read any of these, let me know your favorite parts, or if you plan to try any of them, I would also love if you leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'd also really appreciate a like of this video and a thumbs up, and make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'm delivering healthy and delicious gluten-free recipes to you, product reviews, health tips, and devotional talk. So go enjoy those little devotionals. I hope you find them encouraging like I did, and we will see you next week. Bye for now.